This is the Mojo Weekly News. Good evening. A three-year-old girl has been killed as she was being picked up from preschool, struck by a vehicle in the car park of a daycare centre. The incident occurred on Monday afternoon when the toddler was hit by a car in Melbourne's north. Emergency services rushing to the scene but couldn't save her. Let's go to Brittany Coles now. Brittany, what's the latest on this heartbreaking story? That's right, Chester. Police have labelled this as a tragic accident. This all unfolded just before 5pm on Monday when a three-year-old girl was struck by a car in the car park of Kitty Palace Childcare. The toddler unfortunately died at the scene and a 26-year-old woman who was also hit by the same car was taken to Royal Melbourne Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police haven't yet revealed the relationship between the Broadmeadows woman and the little girl but the woman is assisting police with their investigations. A police spokesperson confirmed the driver of the car was attending to another child in the back seat when the vehicle suddenly moved backwards. It is still unknown what caused the vehicle to reverse and the investigation is ongoing. Police are currently preparing a report for the coroner and flowers and toys are being left outside the centre. The whole community is devastated. Chester. Yeah, such a terrible accident, Brittany. Thank you. The bus driver who was jailed after crashing into a South Melbourne bridge has been freed. Jack Aston was sentenced to at least two and a half years behind bars in December when he crashed his bus into the Montague Street Bridge, injuring six passengers. The Court of Appeal overturned his convictions on Monday, allowing him to walk free. Well, Jack Aston was sentenced to five years jail time in December when he crashed into the notorious Montague Street Bridge. But on Monday, he was freed. The 56-year-old was convicted of six counts of negligently causing serious injury. But last week, the Court of Appeal overturned his convictions. As then, was resentenced to a two-year community correction order on six counts of lesser charges of dangerous driving causing serious injury. In February 2016, Aston had dropped off his passengers at the Melbourne Convention Exhibition Centre and was carrying 14 other passengers to a hotel on St Kilda Road when he crashed into the bridge. Six of the 14 passengers suffered serious injuries including spine and neck fractures and scalp wounds. Addressing the media outside court, Aston apologised to his passengers and asked Daniel Andrews to fix it. The heart of Melbourne was brought to a standstill last week as protesters took to the streets to fight for action on climate change. It was a week of peak hour traffic chaos in the city as activists blocked major intersections, glued themselves to roads and even stripped down for a nude run. Scantily clad protesters stormed the streets of Melbourne, demanding climate action. We continue the battle. This is a worldwide week of action. Disco dancing their way to Burke Street Mall, bringing tram services to a stop, halting peak hour traffic, gluing themselves to the roads in CBD. The climate activists are now doing a nudie run. Always better to be talked about than not talked about. And if you're going to get naked in public, it should be talked about. Carlton Gardens is the headquarters for the week-long protests that resulted in more than 100 arrests in Melbourne. Victoria Police spent $3 million and 17,000 hours maintaining order for all the days. The police have been on the whole respectful. Painting slogans, waving flags, activists stripping down to their undies, preparing to march, bearing almost all. Yeah. We're new, we're rude, we're slowly running out of the mood. Loud chants echoed through Melbourne Central on the sixth day of protests. Just drastic action um, if we're going to have any hope of having a, a planet that's, that people can live on. This week-long protests have come to an end, but Extinction Rebellion continues to fight for climate action. In their own words, this is not the end. After this week, we're going to keep disrupting and uh, Extinction Rebellion is not going to go away. We're going to keep protesting. Tableen Singh. Mojo News. <laughs> now, you may have heard an impeachment inquiry has been launched against US President Donald Trump after allegations he pressured Ukraine to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden. But what exactly does this mean? Here's David Bonadio to break it all down. 
Chester, the inquiry into US President Donald Trump began on September 24, with Nancy Pelosi pushing forward the inquiry. This is a very sad time for our country. I say this to you with great sorrow and prayerfully, uh, that we are at a place that I hoped we would never be. I never thought we would see a president take the actions that he has. So how does political impeachment in the US work? When a sitting president, vice president or civil officer is accused of wrongdoing, a set of allegations or charges are placed forward. Any member of the House of Representatives can suggest to launch an impeachment inquiry. I don't know where this will go, this inquiry will go. It is tough to see now the votes uh, there in the Senate. I myself uh, don't want to see impeachment come. I'd rather see the president defeated in the next election. That, that would be better. If the House Judiciary Committee handles the impeachment, a public hearing would need to take place at some point in the future. No vice president or anyone else in the line of party succession has ever taken over in the history of politics. It may be some time before any outcome on the impeachment is released. However, Congress members will be contributing to the inquiries over the next couple of months. Chester. And now here's Karuna Bala Subramanian with a look back at the rest of the week's top stories. The Turkish military has launched an attack on Kurdish forces in Syria and is currently in its first day of fighting. According to Turkey's President Recep Erdogan, the aim of the incursion was to establish a safe zone about 30 km deep into Syrian territory to resettle millions of Syrian refugees. Up to 1,000 US troops have been evacuated from northern Syria. The attack has received an international outcry, with the UN warning that the number of people fleeing will soon triple. In the worst storm to have hit Japan in decades, Typhoon Hagibis has left a trail of destruction in its wake. Up to 35 people are dead and hundreds injured as the storm causes floods, mudslides, water and power outages. More than 110,000 emergency personnel have been mobilized in search and rescue operations over the weekend. A 5.6 magnitude earthquake also shook Chiba, east of Tokyo, early Saturday evening. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has expressed his condolences over the deaths. Communities are being torn apart in northern New South Wales by several fast-moving bushfires. Firefighters have been struggling to contain these fires as they are being fueled by high temperatures and dangerous conditions. An elderly couple was killed in these fires in Busby's flat and Drake on Sunday. Authorities believe that they have been deliberately lit and while rain has eased the conditions, it wasn't enough to extinguish the fires. On Sunday, Prime Minister Morrison and New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian visited the devastated areas. Peak car traffic came to a halt on Friday as a rogue steer became stranded on the Monash Freeway, causing major delays. The black steer was found on the grass strip between the six lanes of the Monash Freeway near Clyde Road. Police and rangers tried to coax it away with a bundle of hay. They eventually managed to put a lasso around the steer and put it onto a trailer at around 9.45 am. The steer had been stranded from 6.30 in the morning. It is believed it had fallen off of a truck. Tensions flared between anti-abortion protesters and pro-choice campaigners as both groups clashed in the CBD on Saturday. There was heavy police presence trying to keep peace as hundreds of activists marched through the city. Making their voice heard on a personal issue. Babies are one of the most vulnerable in our society and their human right to be born needs to be protected because, you know, it's absolutely horrendous that we have dehumanised the most vulnerable, the most weak among us. This year marks the 10th anniversary of decriminalization of abortion in Victoria. And who are suffering and will suffer for many years to come. We stand with them with love and compassion. The law reforms passed through state parliament in 2008, allowing women to legally access abortion. Anti-abortion protesters were soon met with shame and boos from the pro-abortion protesters. Police had to form a picket line between them to stop the situation from escalating. I think that what they're really doing is protesting against women's rights. It's just really sad that they're allowing their beliefs to you know, dictate how women uh, treat their own bodies. Counter-protesters tried to drown out 
their demands. I've had two abortions and I've also got a teenage daughter and I think that's exactly as it should be. That was my decision. I have no regrets about it whatsoever. It was the best thing for me and any baby that was going to come along nine months later. These people aren't around to help you bring up and care for a baby. Sheetal Singh, Mordra News. The Prime Minister's office has accidentally sent talking points for MPs to journalists on Monday. The leak revealed key topics and suggested lines for MPs to use in interviews with the media. Let's go to David Bonadio now. David, we know politicians recycle the same lines with journalists, but surely sending them their responses before they've even been asked is taking things to another level. Chester, you might say journos were given a heads up this week about how MPs would respond to their questions. The 15-page document contained lines on the budget, welfare, energy prices, drought and even Julian Assange. In other news from Canberra, Scotty Cam, host of The Block, was named National Careers Ambassador. The popular reality TV host is being paid by the government to promote vocational education and training. The move has been criticised by some who say the government should properly fund TAFEs and apprentices rather than hire celebrities. The Coalition has so far refused to say how much they were paying CAM after promising to create 80,000 new apprenticeships and invest in a skills package in the 2019 budget. The national census that is conducted every four years is no longer preparing to ask questions about sexual orientation or gender identity. The Australian Bureau of Statistics consulted with researchers, advocates, communities and individuals who recommend that they include more detailed questions on the topic. According to one researcher, including questions about sexual identity is important to recognise LGBTIQ people who can feel invisible to the wider community. Labor MP Andrew Giles has also called for the 2021 census to include questions about race and ethnicity to better inform public policy. The big four banks will need to explain themselves to the federal government in another inquiry after they failed to pass on interest rate cuts in the new financial year. The Reserve Bank slashed interest rate cuts on home loans three times in a bid to put more money in people's pockets so they could spend it and stimulate the economy after the official cash rate was reported to be at a record low of 0.75%. However, none of the big four banks, including ANZ, Commonwealth Bank, NAB or Westpac, passed on the cuts angering the government. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg has requested an investigation into the banking sector over its refusal to pass the full interest rate cuts to customers. The inquiry comes just nine months after the conclusion of the Royal Commission into banking misconduct. Back to you, Chester. All right, David, we'll leave it there. Thank you. And now here's sport with Brittany Coles. Thanks, Chester. Scott McLaughlin has controversially won the Bathurst 1000, sending his Ford Mustang over the line in a controversial victory. Fellow Ford teammate Fabian Coulthard has faced heavy scrutiny for slowing down the race in the final lap due to engine issues. A move which saw McLaughlin win his maiden title over Holden's Shane van Gisbergen on Sunday. Hyundai A-League debutants Western United have kicked off their season with a bang in a thrilling victory over Wellington Phoenix. Veteran goal machine Bezard Bercher secured United's 1-0 win. Eddie Betts has returned to Carlton after spending six years at Adelaide Crows. The star forward will receive a fairy tale ending to his decorated career by moving back to his old club for a one-year contract. And Women's Tennis World No. 1 Ash Barty has received the Don Award. The award will give the 23-year-old a place in Australian Sports Hall of Fame, with Barty being the first women's tennis player to win the Don. But along with her new impressive award, Vegemite has announced a limited edition Barty Mite in celebration of our Aussie tennis legend. The limited edition jar will feature Barty's signature and will be stocked at all major supermarkets across the nation from mid-October. It's definitely a unique Australia's collector's item and that's one way to get Barty's signature, Chester. Yeah, I still probably won't eat Vegemite. Thank you, Britt. All right, that is the Mojo Weekly News for now. You can stay up to date on our website, mojonews.com.au. I'm Chester Nunn. I hope you enjoy your week from the team. Bye for now.